What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey. I'm Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey. And if you stick around to the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. And with that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Highland Park 15 year old. Stick around. Highland Park today. Highland Park, of course, is the most famous brand from Orkney. Now Orkney does have two distilleries, but Ain't nobody talking about Scapa. Um, Scapa, what are you, what are you doing? When are you gonna get a job? Anyway, Highland Park, they're famous, they're prolific, and they are a damn good brand in my book. Although they do shoot themselves in the foot sometimes, whether it's a low ABV, a low effort whiskey, or just their famously ridiculous marketing. And even then, I still like them. When they give me a whiskey at 40%, I still like them. When they sell me an expensive, no age stated whiskey called Dark Heroes of the Dragon Sword Warriors Courage of the Viking Blade, I still like them. And I think that just comes down to Highland Park's incredible house style. Uh, it's often described as an all rounder whiskey, which makes sense because it gives you a lot of the flavors that you're going to get in Scotch whiskey, just broadly speaking. You get stuff like Gentle Peat, you get Sherry, you get Barley, you get like a floral heathery note, uh, and it's all balanced, it's all in equal measure. Meaning what we get is a very approachable and just a very pleasing whiskey. Uh, and yeah, oftentimes their OBs do often leave me feeling a little bit underwhelmed. But at those times, I turn to the Bible and I read this great quote from Jesus. Hark, let there be IBs or independent bottles. For thy Viking sword is frail and doth not strike with great strength. Also, you guys should totally stop chill filtering. Leviticus chapter 12, verse 26. So yeah, IBs are a great way to explore Highland Park. There's a lot of IBs out there and they give you kind of like an alternative look at the brand, but even just the regular stuff. Like I like the 12, I like the 18, I like the cast strength. Uh, I like some of the discontinued ones. I like the dark origins, I like full volume. So even when they're flawed, they do make good stuff. Now our 15 here was initially introduced a few years back, I think like two or three years ago. Uh, and for the first year or two, it was sold in these fancy porcelain looking decanters. Uh, but just last year in 2023, they switched that over to just like their regular glass look. In terms of reception to this stuff, I would say that generally it's been pretty good, maybe a little bit lukewarm. Uh, most people seem to think the whiskey itself is quite decent, but they're not happy about the price. They say it's too expensive. So I guess that's something we'll have to assess for ourselves today. So let's not waste any more time. Let's jump into our review. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that would be greatly appreciated. For specs, this one comes in at 44%. It's probably chill filtered. It is natural color though. In terms of look, in terms of presentation, this is a very typical Highland Park bottle. Uh, this one is called Viking Heart because of course it is. Uh, I don't really feel any which way about it. It's just typical Highland Park fare. Uh, it's over the top and overly designed with all the Viking stuff, but that's that's par for the course at this point. Uh, we'll give it three out of five. In terms of information on the bottle, we get nothing. There's no non-chill filtered. There's no natural color. I think probably on the sleeve, it says it's natural color. I didn't keep the sleeve, so I don't know what's there, but uh, yeah, the bottle itself definitely lacking in information. Uh, and it looks like a silly Highland Park bottle. On the nose, this gives us light sherry, heather, gentle peat, light caramel. We get cinnamon. We get some sultanas in here. We get some red apple. We get some green apple. We get some pineapple. We get some star fruit. There's orange juice in here. There's florals and there's mirabelle plums. On the palate and finish, this gives us sweet fruits, sweet plums, pineapple, raisins, sultanas, lots of florals in here. So we get like floral peat, heathery peat, straight up flowers, uh, sweet vanilla, very gentle smoke. There's also some faint coastal notes here. There's some damp earth and some forest floor because I eat forest floor. Okay, so this is definitely Highland Park. It's everything you would expect from a Highland Park. HP is always a very recognizable distillate. So we have the heathery peat here. We have the touch of sherry. It's all there. All the hallmarks of the brand are in this glass. And I think in a sense, this gives you what you want, but in another sense, it doesn't give you what you want. Like it really is a quintessential Highland Park. 
all the flavors that you know and love from the brand are in here, but it's very by the numbers. It's very safe. It's not exciting. But because Highland Park is such a great distillery, I think their distillate is so good that there's a baseline of quality from pretty much anything they put out. And because of that, I still think this is a good whiskey. Like it's a classic style and I don't mind when they just stick to what works for them. But apparently I do mind when they stick to what works for them. I do like the flavors in this. I'm glad they gave us a nice age statement here, but I guess I was just hoping for something a little bit more interesting. This is good enough, but that's it. It's just good enough. It's sufficient. I think part of what's missing here is intensity. 44% is kind of a weird number. Just pop an extra 2% on top and then you can call your whiskey craft. I don't know why they don't do that, but they don't do that. So whatever, it's a little bit light. Like it's not totally neutered. It does have some presence in the glass, but it could use a little bit of a bump. It's not completely watery, but you know. Also, I think the casks in here, the sherry casks are a little bit tired, a little bit weak. Uh, I'm usually the guy that says I don't want over-the-top cask influence, I want to taste the distillate, blah blah blah. I do wish that the sherry casks in here were louder, bolder, gave us more intensity. I think that would benefit the profile. And I also think it would round out the whiskey a little bit more. Despite being a whiskey that's fully 15 years of age, uh, if I went in blind, I might guess that this is a 12-year-old. So it's lacking in intensity of flavor and it's not quite as rounded and integrated as I think it could be. Now for the record, I haven't actually done a side-by-side -side between this one and the 12-year-old. Uh, we'll get to value in a second, but I'll just say this. This is more than double the price of the 12-year-old. I do like the 12-year-old, but I like the 12-year-old for what it is, which is an affordable entry-level whiskey, whereas this is not. So at the end of the day, uh, I like it, but I'm just not impressed with this stuff. For score, I'm going to land on 83 here. I think it's a nice, solid, drinkable, enjoyable, middle-of-the-road whiskey. Uh, I think its biggest detractor is going to be uh, when we touch on value and we'll get there in a moment. Before we do though, I do want to say a quick thank you to all my channel members and all my patrons. Guys, thank you so much for all the support. And if you want to help out the channel, if you want to help keep it financially sustainable and independent, there are a number of ways that you can help. I have both Patreon and PayPal listed down below. Anything and everything helps, guys. Uh, this is a very expensive channel to run with all the whiskey that I buy. I do everything from scripting to shooting to editing. It's all me and any extra support from you guys is greatly appreciated. And once again, huge thank you to those of you who are already supporting the channel. Now, let's talk about value. So I pretty much gave it away already, but the value for this is not very good. I paid about 90 US for it. so roughly 70 pounds here in Taiwan. I checked some of the international online retailers out of the UK and it's selling for over 80 pounds there. And for that price, guys, it is not worth it. Which is why I was so critical of this stuff in the review. It is a pleasant, competent, well-made and good tasting whiskey, but that price tag is just not justifiable. Uh, Highland Park is clearly trying to premiumize. I think your money would be better spent somewhere else. And that will be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As I said earlier, I've got Patreon and PayPal listed down below. And of course, I want to hear from you. Have you tried our Highland Park 15? How would you compare it to the rest of the line? What are your thoughts on it? Let me know all of that down below. Finally, down below, you can also let me know what you want to see me review down the line. And I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.